Do people yell at you for having a high prop contraption? Do you want to fix this? Do you also want an unnervingly highly detailed upright piano? Well, funny enough, I've got the tool just for you. <laughs> Prop to Mesh was created by Shadow Scion in 2020. He also made S props, primitives, and tank track tool. Thanks to his invention, we no longer have to succumb to FPS induced lag from high prop builds. Link in the description below. Alright, so in this video, I may refer to some sections in the old video, which I'll keep unlisted uh, to save confusion. However, a lot of it has changed, and a lot of it actually has stayed the same. So. And for those who, who have used this tool, don't worry about me mentioning the old video, because this is the way we do it now, anyway. So, the tool can be found in the render section, in uh, legacy mode, that's what P2M used to look like. Um, one cube would be one controller, essentially just one colour of one material per controller, and we had this thing where you would have a, a mess of controllers either in the boot uh, or rather the trunk of your vehicle or anywhere else and you could make them invisible so if you had an opposite origin they would poke out and they wouldn't look very nice uh, in new P2M we now have uh, what I will refer to in the studio as a hub they are like these uh, mine actually do look slightly different on my vehicles I tend to have a smaller S props rectangle because I prefer to have things as slim as possible um, Alright, as you can see with this one, you can actually uh, have a bank of controllers in the uh, same uh, hub. So we'll just go back and we'll just delete all of them so we start from the beginning. Okay, so the rule with uh, prop to mesh is that it's usually one colour and one material per controller. Um, you can't increase um, any more per controller, so if you want the uh, body to be a different colour in some sections, uh, you will need a new controller for new colours, <clears throat> essentially like that. Here we have your hub, uh, I'm just going to place it anywhere on the vehicle for now, I do advise you to put it uh, where you usually mirror your vehicle, you know, down, right down the centre, so you can find it for easy reference, but then you can just put it anywhere you want, but bearing in mind if you do want to add stuff to it or want to edit it, you, you have to take into account that the offset would be offset, you know, origin rather, you know. So, to convert this, um, you just right click on the controller, controller hub, sorry, <laughs> it's, it, for me it takes some time to get used to as well, um, left click to a controller, so you've got one here, and then right click to set the models, and now what this means is now you're in model setting mode, um, now my settings, I tend to have only select entities of the same colour and only select entities of the same material. This means that you can easily group um, schemes, as it were. Um, selection radius, I tend to have onto max. If you're building next to other people, uh, you might want, you might not want to do that. But there we go. Class filters, you will find you can actually block out certain things. For example, if you've accidentally in the past accidentally messed your gun or something, you can actually uh, make sure not to do that. So obviously I have uh, prop, prop physics allowed, but everything else off. You can convert old prop to mesh cube controllers into the new format, I found. Um, and also the new primitive props, um, which are very, very useful. Um, you can also convert to prop to mesh as well. Anyway, so back to the controller. Let's see you convert the body. So hold shift and right click to do a sort of... Um, sweeping selection of the body. As you can see, it's all this weird uh, turquoise colour. And then you just right click the controller again, give it a moment, and it will come up. And if it's this, this weird sort of uh, Phoenix Storms texture, that means uh, it's been meshed. So you actually can go back and you can um, texture it like so. And you just follow the same pattern. So if you want to do the grill, for example, Hold shift, right click on the grill, and then right click control and controller again. It should come up like that. Uh, I do advise using color meter on your materials beforehand um, because obviously they don't transfer through the meshing process. But other than that, 
Yeah, that's essentially as basic as it gets for Prompt Mesh. It works a lot like parenting in the sense of selection and whatnot. But you also need to make sure that the uh, controller won't move about because, as you can see, there we go, that's the whole body. <laughs> and you just continue the step uh, there on for the rest of the vehicle. Now, let's take a look at the controller settings itself. If you want to go into context menu, uh, right click the controller, and do edit props and mesh. Uh, you will find the separate controllers here, a list of the menus. Uh, this is the one for the body, number one. You can actually name these um, by right clicking and doing set controller name. I can't actually quite see this because I've got my recording tab in the way, but I'm assuming that is set controller name. Um, flags and you can also export as an OBJ uh, and export to expression 2 and I will demonstrate those later. For now we're just going to take a look at the controller itself. So your position offset, your angle offset, your scale so you can make the car as small or as big as you want. Um, please do mind though that you do have to press enter when I'm um, putting in the values so they turn blue. I've seen some people who Scratch, scratching their heads all day long, wondering why the car won't get big or small enough. You actually do have to press enter on anything you do in here. Uh, if you open .mdl, if your car's made out of props, you will find every single prop here in a wireframe highlight. Um, and then you actually can go ahead and right click and edit part or remove parts. Importing and exporting basic models. And what this means is models that are underneath uh, I believe 20,000 triangles. Any more than that, it becomes an awful uh, kind of splintery, triangly mess. But I shall, you know, ba basically demonstrate how you would export and import models. So uh, we'll start with importing first. Okay, so first off, let's say you want to import something, since I see more people wanting to import stuff rather than export stuff. So we're going to go with importing first. Um, this is Blender. If you're not f familiar with it, do install it. It's it's extremely useful. Uh, we're not going to model anything. I'm just going to show you just a, a model I have on me, and then how we can transfer that into um, Gmod. So uh, let's go to file. Let's go to import. Let's go to Collada because I know that the file is a .day file, DAE. Um, so it's on my desktop somewhere. Baz one. Here we go. This is Baz the monkey. If you've watched the first Peter M tutorial, you probably recognise him. He's a low polygonal uh, gorilla. <laughs> um, but here he is. So I'm just going to adjust his origin point. The origin point will usually be where the, the controller is. Export as OBJ. Uh, right, I'm... right, so we're back in the game. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of the junior for now. Get to pop to mesh uh, controller. Right click, left click to add a controller. Let's hoist this up a bit. And then you want to open the uh, controller, go to OBJ, which is this one, open file browser. Now, mine is, of course, extremely cluttered. It, you won't have all of this, don't worry. Um, we're just going to go and try and find Baza. Baza's here somewhere. Baza the monkey, new one, OBJ. That's it. Yeah, that's the old one. Um, now here we have render inside, render invert, and render smooth. Render smooth is just a basic smoother. It uh, gets rid of all the funky triangles. Uh, quite useful. Render inside, render invert. You'll find with some models they do actually need these on. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Well, hopefully. Ah, he's extremely tiny. Okay, so this is the thing I have with Blender, is that I don't quite know what units Blender works in, I think it might be a uh, metric, but we use we use inches and <laughs> in Gmod. So actually, so this is actually a good opportunity to just, uh, demonstrate how you can scale things up. So there we go. Type the numbers in. Uh, press Enter. Make sure they're blue. Confirm changes. And there we go. There's Baza. Let's say we want to export. Yeah, let's just say a bench. Make it, make it easy. So, this controller, uh, put it somewhere. I, I, I would advise put it, you know, in the center because that would be the origin of said um, model, as it were, when you export. So we'll just put it there for now. I think. Yeah, bring up 
prop to mesh. Right click, <laughs> click, select the bench. Right click on the controller again. There we go. And then we can go into. Uh, yeah, controller, there we go. Uh, export as OBJ. Bench1.txt. I'm just going to go back to the file browser again. Bench1 as a. Ignore my flickering cursor if you do see that, by the way. Um, you'll see Bench1 as a text file. If you open it, it's just a bunch of vectors and stuff, so to uh, change that, you just go, go to Save As, uh, Remove.dxt at the end, and then select All Files from the uh, file format, and it should come up as an actual uh, 3D model here. Yep, there we go. That's the model of the bench in question. What you can do, if you're sadistic enough, is you can actually uh, re-import the model you've just exported. Uh, there is actually no reason to do this. As I said, I don't know why you would do this, but you can do it. Yeah, don't... <laughs> my, my word of advice, please do not go ham and start, you know, meshing everything. I see uh, there, was like a, there was one Russian guy with a BMW 3 Series on Real Builders the other day, and he had 63 controllers, and all of them were mesh imported, and it took it, it takes ages for it to save, ages it for ages for it to load, and ages for it to import in. And I remember sitting there, can't no, like waiting for him to render the bloody text on the air conditioning vents <laughs> and the controls. And if 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 you're gonna do that, you might as well just go and play Forza or Gran Turismo. Just stop playing Gmod at that rate. Anyway. Off I go, and so you, so you will, so you will, so I'm having a stroke now. <laughs> Be seeing you. But first, a history lesson. Propter mesh, better known as the spallation induced end harnessing formula for the prevention of low proceed device in which various items are placed within a stasis to ensure longevity and security in the act of long term nuclear Armageddon was invented in 1946 by Dr. John Lindstrom and his super evil lay underneath Mount Boris and independent design at the Royal Craft by Scientific University and his related to the circumference of physium poisoning and blindness sleep. None of this happened.